Hello everyone, welcome back. Uh, so, so far in the videos we have covered a few system archetypes. <clears throat> so, vicious cycles, an example being like customers leaving, uh, more customers leaving, giving you a bad reputation, encouraging even more customers to leave. So, reinforcing kind of negative feedback loop and you can picture what would happen graphically is your number of customers would start to decrease but then that really picks up steam as your reputation get wor gets worse and it kind of crashes. <clears throat> a, a virtuous cycle, so like a new product that's on a roll because of good you know, word of mouth and industry buzz. So you've got a number of customers on your product, they're talking about it in a positive way, positive word of mouth drives up the number of customers. So you can picture this as a positive exponential growth, a growth curve because it reinforces itself. And then the third one we talked about was fixes, were fixes that fail. Uh, for instance, uh, you have a problem in your profits. So you stop traveling to save some money, and that helps fix the profit problem. But inadvertently, over a longer period of time, you start to lose touch with customers because you're not traveling, and you start to build the wrong products and those sorts of things. And so you end up with an even larger profit problem. So it's a fix that ended up failing in the long, the long run. And graphically, you can imagine that as your profits are going down, so you stop traveling, that helps your profits for a while. And then you start tanking because you're losing touch with customers and building the wrong products. So, uh, so, far all we, so far what we've talked about is really understanding these different loops and these different situations. And then kind of stopping the bad ones, you know, trying and weakening uh, weakness, uh, enforcing the good ones. So getting your early customers to publish reference stories and be, um, you know, uh, talking at conferences and those sorts of things. And then just kind of weakening the... Uh, negative aspects of these uh, loops. For instance, if you do need to stop traveling, make sure you have alternate ways to connect with your customers or make sure customer travel is not impacted in the same way as internal travel, let's say. So, so far it's been strengthening the good and, uh, and weakening the bad cycles. But today we're going to talk about changing the system altogether. And uh, so altering the cause and effect loops in the system to get a better outcome instead of just weakening one, uh, one part of it. And I'm going to go through the example of a price war and show you how that system is set up and why it happens uh, and then what, what you can do to, to change it. Okay, so let me erase stuff. So uh, we've all seen these, but let's, uh, let's just diagram out the cause and effect relationships would really cause a, a price war. So let's say we've got an industry with two companies, you and the other guy. So you have your price, I'll call it our price, and there's their price. And they both cause what I'm going to call our price advantage. So for instance, if we have roughly similar products and we have a lower price, price, we have a price advantage. Or if there's a difference in value of the products, but we've got a, you know, a lower price relative to that value than they have, then we have a price, price advantage. Or the opposite might be true. They may, we may have a price disadvantage. But at any rate, the price advantage basically will drive market share. I'll just say our market share. So if we have a good price advantage, that's going to drive a higher market share for us uh, relative to them. Okay? Now, um, just so we can uh, understand this piece, piece of the loop, what typically drives pricing decisions? Uh, the reality is in most companies, market share drives pricing decisions. So that's the basic link, meaning if our market share is high, then we may raise price uh, in order to take profits from the market. Uh, if our market share is low, we may lower price in order to get our market share back up. So basically, pricing decisions are generally made on, uh, on market share. And actually, the same is true of other companies. Okay? So this is basically the structure of the system. Now, let's say they have reached a conclusion that they want higher market share, the other folks. So they decide to lower their price. So they have a goal market share goal. 
So they decide to lower their price. So how would the system respond to that? Well, let's trace it through. If they lower their price, our price advantage decreases. If our price advantage decreases, our market share will decrease. And that will cause us to lower our price. If we lower our price, then our price advantage increases, our market share increases, which will cause them to lower their price even further. So they're going to lower their price to help their market share. We're going to lower our price to help our market share. And we just keep the process of lowering our price and then the other guy's price up until the whole bottom of the market falls. Uh, falls to the ground. So in a sense we've done something, we've taken actions and made decisions that are typical pricing decisions based on market, our market share that in a sense cause the company to, uh, to lose a whole, lot of, a whole lot of profits in this case. And the other company isn't that better off uh, either. You know, price wars really don't help the firms that engage in it. They, they do end up helping the customers. So what can you do um, what can you do about this? So this is, a, this is actually a real case. It was a group of MIT um, uh, students and professors that went into a company that faced this situation. A competitor had significantly lowered their price. And the company was deciding what to do, whether to lower their price in its typical fashion or to do something else. And they'd actually modeled this all out with a variety of, of options and, and system dynamics models to figure out uh, what they would do. And they tried out different decision-making rules around their price and decided to actually change the structure of their system to not base up their price on their market share. So they took away this link and they changed it so they basically set their price, our price basically, as on their price. So what happened is the other company lowered their price. They actually had a premium product so they um, they, were, they set their price to be 10% higher than the other guy, basically. And so they ended up lowering their price by the same amount that the competitor uh, lowered their price, and then the whole situation stopped. So there wasn't a price war. They, awarded, they, they avoided it by basically changing the decision rule on which they based their price, which in a sense is changing the structure of the system. So a lot of the system structure is really the basis by which you – make decisions, the cause and effect links that you have uh, in the system, which in a lot of systems are information links and decision links. So in this case, they lost a little market share, but retained the majority of their profits. If they would have gone into a price war against this other company, they would have been much worth, worse off from a profit uh, point of view. Okay, so that's a small example of basically changing the system, changing the way you make decisions, Understanding how the system dynamics ordinarily cause price wars, but if you change those dynamics, you can prevent them and help, uh, help your company. So, um, so that's it. So just wanted to give you an example of how changing the system is actually one way to solve problems, not just sort of weakening, strengthening loops, but really changing the basis by which uh, you make decisions, which, uh, uh, which I hope this was a good example of for you. Okay, that's it. Until next time, talk to you later.